So hi and welcome back to the Night Hacking interviews, still at Eurodev, and we have a new guest, Dahlia Gartsman. Yes, hello, thank you and for having me. Yeah, thanks that you're here, <laughs> and you have a very interesting job title, or <laughs> I would say because you're an algorithm developer. Yeah. So what do you do besides developing <laughs> algorithms, or what kind of algorithms? Um, I find it interesting that you find it interesting. Yeah. I know many algorithm developers and also I founded an uh, algorithm developers meetup in Israel mm -hmm. that has a very large crowd and a lot of speakers. Uh, so what do I do? For yeah. the past couple of years, I've been an algorithm developer in the smart mobility domain. Mm -hmm. I worked for a year or so in VIA, the ride sharing app, and mm -hmm. then for another six months in a small startup in the logistics domain. And just next month, I'm starting a new job in the construction tech. Okay. Yeah, so I think the uh, connecting link between all of these would be that I like to think of myself as a problem solver. Yeah. Uh, that I have a mathematical background and I did some algorithms in my master's degree. And these are like my, um, my building blocks for mm -hmm. solving problems. So specifically that you mentioned there are meetups on you know, being an algorithm developer. So what is the m thing that distinguishes this the most from you know, being a normal developer like a Java developer? Because ultimately we all implement algorithm, uh, algorithms, right? Whether they're more complex or very simple, but it's always, you know, Solving a problem, like uh, which is actually a very nice mindset to have as a developer, right? Is you know kind of always the case if you're a developer, right? Yeah. So I think my answer would be that I don't know because I don't know what it means to be a developer. I've uh, I have a master's degree in pure math, mm -hmm. and I learned to code for the first time when I was 30. So I don't have an experience as uh -huh. a regular developer. Um, but from my friends who are developers, I think that maybe uh, the type of problems that we're trying to solve are a bit different. Mm -hmm. So maybe a friend who is a developer that could be working on a long-term project mm -hmm. like I am, but they would be developing uh, a new architecture, right. a new service, a new tool, whereas I would be uh, tackling this uh, big problem of, for example, someone from the computer vision domain would say, where would you position the camera automatically to capture us in just the right angle without you having to sit yeah. there and right. reorient and blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay, so that's very interesting, es especially when you, um, let's say, solve problems, when you're okay. trying to d come up with a new algorithm or with a way how to do things. What is your typical tool set or, you know, as you would say, language to, to write in? Because when I, when I solve some problems, I very often just start it on paper or, you know, like on pseudocode or code comments or something like that, or on a whiteboard, you know, drawing things around. I think there are different type of tools, but is there something like a a common language or a more formal language than, you know, just writing something or drawing boxes or or probably depending on the problem domain, I guess? Uh, my favorite language is math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> fair enough. That's um, what I mean, basically. Uh, so there is, uh, I think you phrase it very accurately uh, that maybe I mean, obviously we have pseudocode and before I sit down to write a complex, uh, very high dimensional project, I would first write it down on not pen and paper. We have LaTeX. Mm -hmm. It's a yep. word thing yeah. on the computer that I writes. I think that, uh, most people are familiar with it. Yeah, I love LaTeX. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, and then you have uh, maybe if you are a developer that is uh, specializing in databases, mm -hmm. then you would have names of containers, and I don't even know the names to uh, try and create a parallelism, but then if you are an algorithm developer, usually you would have uh, some basis, some mathematical beta basis to the problem you're trying mm -hmm. to solve and the way you're trying to solve it. And I think one of the major issues is that sometimes you have a very vague question, like the one I suggested before of how to automatically uh, situate the camera. Mm -hmm. 
So this is a very vague and general question. So how do you take this question and put it down to earth uh, in a manner that you can model the question with the tools that you have? Right. How would you um, use uh, geometry and computational geometry mm -hmm and all kinds of aspects of the camera and linear algebra and whatnot to uh, formalize the question that you're trying to solve, mm -hmm. which then later you can use the tools that you know to solve them. I think this makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, okay. there. What I could think of, so if, you, for example, you come up with some solution of, for example, positioning this camera, then from your experience, what is a good way to um, communicate then with somebody who would implement it as code, right? Because I, I guess there is still some mismatch of saying you cannot take whatever you produce it and write it down in, in Java or any other language of your choice immediately, right? So you will have some communication, I would mm -hmm. say, and maybe some translation even being saying, for example, this math statement or you know let's let's say you ha have an um, uh, algorithm that includes a statement that is very quite easy to just display it as a math right um, uh, line of code how to communicate that that well to the language of your choice or to your target language uh, so myself and most of my peers were writing in Python mm -hmm. which is very easy to close to <laughs> maths yeah like you have all these packages yeah. that are very mathematical but right. even if you just write native python which is what mostly uh, well what is mm -hmm. very often done mm -hmm. because these packages could be slow or some right. other constraints so even native python is very easy to translate just an equation well s it's not easy easy but relatively easy to translate a mathematical equation to constraints and parameters and uh, stuff that you want to implement in your code and then you have to wrap it up and then you have to prepare the data and then you need to understand what is the entire pipeline that mm -hmm. is happening and write the api and um so basically I think a few years ago, it would have been more common that the algorithm developers would sit and like articulate and model and try to come up with the problem and maybe a pipeline for the solution and mm -hmm. it would stop there, maybe write a POC in MATLAB or something. And these days the trend is going to end-to-end -end solutions. Mm -hmm. So myself and again, a lot of my peers, we do the entire process from okay. taking a very vague question to modeling to mathematical um, formulation to pseudocode to code and to bring it to all the way to production. Okay, so bring it to the customer as well and basically rolling it out to... Um, I don't think it's as customer facing as many of my developer friends mm -hmm. uh, do. Um, I, I sometimes, it's easy for me to think about my... Um, my projects as like the back end to the back end yeah. because if the yeah. if the consumer would see the front end or the mobile or whatever and then you have the back end right. that the front end is sending requests to the back end sure. then the back end will probably send requests to my algorithm makes sense makes sense that's very interesting also to see that um i i think that's also some um what i want to say is rewarding type of work if you say <laughs> it's not only you know pure um, theoretical um, coming up with something because then you immediately seeing it being or not immediately but you seeing it being applied in the real world and solving you know real world solutions rather than just you know years afterwards or might be the case that is implemented so you're actually uh, helping somebody directly and you see it alive <laughs> right out there yeah i think it's a process that i am going through personally so i started my first uh, degree in pure math mm -hmm thinking I'm going to be Professor Dalia Gartzman doing only pure <laughs> math. The world has nothing to do with exactly, me. Exactly, like being then, that ivory tower. And yeah, <laughs> exactly. And as the years went by, I became uh, intrigued by the connection to the world. Mm -hmm. And so in my master's degree, I kind of squinted towards computer science. And then my master's thesis was in like very informatical, mathematical, and computer science mm -hmm. uh, projects. And then I left the academy because I like 
I had the taste of what it means to touch real life. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, uh, <laughs> ah, but I don't. To it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but it's still not real, you know. I yeah. write this thesis that barely myself and my advisor read, and I want to do real stuff in the real yeah. world. Yeah. And so I left the academy yeah. and joined the real world. Yeah. <laughs> but this is very nice to hear, and I can uh, I can somewhat relate to it. Like in my studies, I studied computer science. We had a um, subject called applied maths, okay. which for me was the first time that I saw. You know, I, I did a lot of maths, and you know, in, in school and whatever. But that I saw the connection to the real world as well. So then it's like, oh, this stuff is actually useful. And now I'm interested in, hey, how does it work, by exactly. the way? And yeah, I can fully, as, uh, at least that was my impression, to once you see that connection where it's actually, where the usefulness lies, then it's even more interesting. And, you know, it's, it's much more, I don't know, you feel more connected rather than just being up in that ivory tower and saying, oh, this is how, yeah. Yeah. you know, we, we should do things and w without that connection. So I think that's a very nice thing to see. Yeah, I... I'm I should point out that I feel exactly the same way. Uh, I'm I think that even when I was studying pure math for the sake of pure math, it was always in my mind that even though I'm not connected to like the actual physical world, mm -hmm. I'm connected to my conceptual world. And I really remember how mathematical concepts help me articulate the world that mm -hmm. I see around me. Mm -hmm. And I like clearly remember the first day, uh, the first class in graph theory mm -hmm. class, and I, uh, the teacher showed the um, the graph, and I was like, I was mind blown. It was like love at first sight. Yeah. Like I felt, like I finally have a model of the world mm -hmm. that I mm -hmm. can relate to, and I can explain things to myself, and it became very connected to me, like from the first day in the academy, even though everything was very high level and abstract, it still felt like I can connect to it mm -hmm. in the psychological level. Mm -hmm. um, and you should know, I, <laughs> I was bad at math growing up. I failed my, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but it's like the final exam mm -hmm. at high school. So I failed it a couple of times. Then I passed. It's fine. I have a yeah. degree. <laughs> I, I finished high school. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it was because then I didn't get it. And mm -hmm. then in the university, I finally got it. Like it, it became interesting and deep and deep. Yeah. <laughs> That is very nice to hear. That's a very, very, very cool story. Um, so I typically talk to, uh, what I would like to um, have as a somewhat advice or a closing statement, um, because I typically talk to developers. Um, so for a, let's say, more normal day-to-day -day developer who would be interested uh, a little bit more into solving, you know, more complex problems, like maybe um, coming up with an algorithm, what do you think is a good starting resource other than the, you know, studying maths, for example, to get a little bit more on that more complex abstract topic um, of coming up with a solution of solving problems? Wow, that's a really good question. I wish I had more time to think <laughs> of an answer because I'm like, I'm certain that there's a good answer hiding in the back of my mind. Right. Uh, so first, um, well, the talk I gave this morning mm -hmm. about a practical intro to data science, it has many ideas on how, on where to explore um, some more algorithmic paths. I mean, this title, for example, sounds sounds yeah. already perfect for the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also, um, so I I do have an idea. Mm -hmm. There's a YouTube channel called Three Blue One Brown, or the other way around, mm -hmm. Three Brown One Blue. Mm -hmm. Anyway, one of the one well, of them. I, I think if you put in the search terms, yeah. you'll come up with it. <laughs> right, three B, it's gonna autocomplete. Um, and this guy does um, very visual. Uh, videos of mathematical and physical and physics okay. concepts so both you can see how you like the concepts of mathematical knowledge in the context of something that is useful and visual and very relatable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these are really good videos and there are a number of videos where he is solving all kinds of um, like complex mathematical problems, like from competitions and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I reached 
to the back of my mind <laughs> <laughs> and I know the answer I want to give. Okay. Okay. So there's a website called Project Euler mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful website. It's just full of hundreds of riddles that they all have a common theme that they are on one hand mathematical but on the other hand, you solve them with code. Oh so nice. you can articulate the solution in mathematical terms, but then you need to come up with an come answer with to a, a specific number, anyway, and yeah. then mm -hmm. you have to program because mm -hmm. you cannot do it by hand. Mm -hmm. And you have hundreds of questions in uh, many different levels. This is actually also a really good way to learn how to program. Mm -hmm. If you come from a mathematical background and oh you want to yeah, learn how to helps, program, yeah, yeah. then that's a perfect way. Uh, so Project Euler. <laughs> so p perfect answer for both camps, <laughs> pretty <Yeah. laughs> much. Very nice. So thanks a lot for sharing. Uh, Thank that you for having value. me. And yeah, um, for everybody who's watching, I would say, well, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye.